So does anyone have any uh, thing they'd like to share this morning or comment on or ask any questions? Well, I just wanted to thank you for the teaching this morning on light and the reminder that, you know, that's our default state and light and happiness and so forth. Um, my experience was like, yeah, yeah, I know all that. Why can't I get it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of like, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, but like, I think that the thing that I became aware of is like, um, I could tell like my physical state and energetic state was not quite where I would like it. And um, also, it's very good to be back. I think, you know, you <laughs> just, um back in class that is so mm -hmm. i was like oh all right so i can feel this energy congestion you know and kind of fatigue and all this and what you said something something came together about you know like that um when we're not feeling that there's some shame and i was like what what does that look like? And I started to become aware and the, they were so quick. It was hard to catch them, but I started to become aware of the thoughts that were um, coloring my experience. And I realized that those thoughts were all looking for a prerequisite for happiness and prerequisite for feeling okay. And that I have some associations with fatigue and scatteredness where that's not okay. You know, it's not an okay state. And that I'm looking for, you know, more energy and clarity in order to feel my worth. And I was like, that's really interesting. So I started to have more objective sense of, I was like, that's terrible. You know, <laughs> basically <laughs> these, these, these micro thoughts coming in that are making me feel terrible mm. and I started to catch them it was like picking them out of the air you know like plucking them out of the air it's like that feels bad that feels bad and it just effectively neutralized them mm. mm -hmm. and um I was like that's what shame looks like and that's like the catching myself um not seeking happiness as a default state and so i was like i feel like fatigued and scattered but i feel whole now and i feel like more empowered in terms of like diffusing one by one these things that come in <laughs> and um and then I'm like, well, there's a danger now that now that I've had this realization, that's going to be another accomplishment that'll make me feel good. And I have a new target. Mm -hmm. This is really like <laughs> tr tricky. It's tricky. Yeah, it's very, it's very insidious. Yeah, yeah, insidious is the word I was thinking too. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow, it's just like your mind. And, and I was like, why does my mind want to generate these prerequisites? Like, why, why does it? do that to begin with um so that's kind of where my curiosity was going but i feel like a, a lot more peace with a sub par state and i realize there's so much emphasis in my um my own lens towards getting an optimal state mm -hmm. and associating that with feeling is like an emotional conditioning where that's good and something outside of that is not good. Um, so that was really freeing to see. So I just wanted to share that. And oh, anything you. you want to comment on that, <laughs> you're very welcome. So. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. That's kind of, you know, so <clears throat> most likely when it came together is when I said, the reason I'm telling you that your resting state or your natural state is happiness, the reason that that is a you know the reason I'm telling you is not so that you know 
that's what you feel because I, I expressly said, you know, when you start relaxing um, and you actually start allowing yourself to feel space and light, then oftentimes actually the first thing you feel is actually not that, if anything, it actually you feel, it actually highlights that you feel crummy. Um, and I said, you know, don't, you know, I'm not telling you that because and it's kind of like interesting, like your resting state or your default state or your natural state is happy. You know, it's like a, like a really nice concept. Practically, what does that mean? And the reason I actually explained that is because when the experience of that is when you accept that, uh, the first thing that you feel is actually all the parts where you don't feel so good. Because when you start relaxing and you start letting go of the tension, then for one thing, all the places where you're holding attention becomes apparent. And so the first thing that actually becomes apparent is uh, the pain. And that's why I was explaining that there are two different kinds of awareness. There's the awareness of the spaciousness, uh, the absolute spaciousness of how there's more space in the universe um, than in its, you know, in traditional meditation uh, that's called the void whether you're in Buddhism or in Taoism or in the Indian tradition uh, or really any esoteric tradition, one of the things that they have you do is they have you close, uh, close your eyes and then say, okay, you know, now try and go in, you know, in the darkness, try and go in every direction and you'll notice that you can go infinitely in any space. And actually when you close your eyes, you become, real, uh, you become aware that space is everywhere. And if you become aware of the space that's all around us, then you start realizing that space actually stretches infinitely in all directions. So that concept of spaciousness actually is a concept of the void. And, but you know, it's such an assumption, it's like it's a backdrop of all things. So we don't notice that space and we don't consider it important. So we, and if it's, it's an interesting thing, when you start becoming aware of that infinite space and you just rest in it and you're able to stay in it, then you start noticing that there's light infused with that state. Light just naturally accumulates uh, or you just feel light. Um, and what you realize is, is that, oh, all things are space and light. And so that's why the, the beginning exercise was, okay, uh, imagine that there's sky all around you uh, and imagine there's sunlight and notice how you feel. And, you'll, and most people notice that they feel happy. Now, if you don't feel happy, it's or as they start noticing that they feel happy, a moment later, they're, they're gonna start feeling crummy. And the reason is because as you start feeling better, and this is actually why it's so difficult to feel good. Um, <clears throat> it's because the moment you start feeling better, you start relaxing. And as you start relaxing, you start experiencing all the things that you're holding. So ironically, you start experiencing all the negative emotions very concretely. And most people don't want to, don't expect that because you know you think that you're going to feel better but actually the first one of the first things that actually happens when you start feeling better is you actually start feeling crummy shortly after initially feeling the happiness and the reason this actually happens and it's counterintuitive so your question was why is it that we're so vested if I remember the question correctly, why is it that we're so vested in focusing on this bad feeling? Um, and the reason is because we wanna feel good. Our you know, um, entire you know, being is designed so that we can feel good, whether emotionally, physically, you know, mentally, we're designed so that we can feel good. And we all have the experience of there being a problem, the problem being solved and then feeling better. So 
because of the experience, we want to solve the problem. So we become problem focused. So if we solve this problem, then you know we won't experience the pain. And then if we solve this problem, we won't experience the pain. And if we solve this problem, then we won't experience the pain. So, and then on top of that, the kind of problems that we're trying to solve in life, actually, it, we try and solve them permanently. It will never happen again. So we look for like really big solutions. But the issue with life is, as I was explaining, there are two different kinds of awareness. One is the awareness of the absolute. And then the other is the awareness of the relative. Their awareness of the relative is actually what an individual needs or what life needs in order to stay balanced from moment to moment to sustain life. So it would tell you such things as, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, you know, I need this. So it's actually whatever the life needs to survive. And that's called relative awareness. And so most people learn how to focus on relative awareness. And if you lose um, awareness of the bigger whole, then you become very survival focused. And, you know, and that spells for a miserable life because that's kind of like becoming myopic. And that's when you go into your scarcity brain where survival is all you look at. And so if that's the case, you lose perspective of being able to take in the beauty of life which actually, you know, is to be able to look at the bigger picture, like to look at a vista and enjoy it and relax. Um, and so the wisdom of training, you know, meditation is to be able to not lose that absolute awareness of the bigger space of space and light where you're just naturally happy, where when you are not worried about the immediate need, then you're more relaxed and you're happy. And from that perspective, you realize that you can actually get, can have that relative need met within the perspective of the absolute awareness. And so in that is called abundance perspective. And actually we experience that, you know, if we have enough food in the fridge, even if we're hungry, it's not a big deal. But if we forget that we have enough food in the fridge and then we focus on just being hungry, then the hunger really increases and kind of goes out of balance. And so, <clears throat> right, so most of us have kind of, especially in busy modern day life, we don't actually come out of our scarcity state or fight or flight or our rushing state or busy mode. My life is busy. You know, it used to be that you'd work and then you'd, you know, rise with the sun. You'd work while you can, while there's sunlight or hunt. And then when it gets dark, you, you know, or before it gets dark, you come home and then you rest and then you hang out with your folks and so on and so forth. Now with the invention of electricity, you can stay productive. And you know, it's like, even when you come home, it's not necessarily actually restful. And so you have a problem. You, you're becoming more and more scarcity focused. And then the only avenue you have is escape to disengagement by looking at media or and things like that. So we have very, how should I say this? Um, we have a, a very congested system. 
I would say a lot of us have a very congested system and a system that's out of balance and a system that's used to trying to solve an, the entire problem. And so for a lot of people, when they start meditating, all of a sudden, you experience the congestion all at once. So now let's say for instance, you're going through something that's difficult or you haven't been keeping up or there's been more happening in your life than you can process through, let go. And then you do this, then you'll notice that you have a problem focused mind. Now, if you have this perspective already, then you notice, oh, I'm releasing. And instead of focusing on the problem, you would just stay with the spaciousness and let it release. And as it releases, you realize that literally you can tell where the fearful thoughts are coming from in your body and in your brain. Literally, like you can feel it, releasing it. But you won't notice that until you have enough perspective. Because typically what happens is that we get distracted by how real our fears feel that our mind comes up with. That's called the illusions of the mind. And that's why they say it's not real. It's, and then most people have trouble with that because, well, you know what, I predicted, predicted it accurately or that problem is a real problem in dealing with. Are you, you know, saying that I should not solve the problem that's going on at work or, you know, the problem that's going on with my family or, and then so people say, you know, that's a real problem. What do you mean? It's the illusions of the mind. And what they're saying is, they're not saying that the things that you're dealing with in life is actually not real. What they're saying is, is that <clears throat> um, you're not able to let go of these thoughts because you don't realize that you have this because you have these thoughts because of tension and that they're coming up because your body's trying to release them. And then if you just let them release, it's kind of interesting, your mind, and you'll feel your body releasing. And then you'll feel your body actually becoming spacious and being filled with light again. You just, your body just feels brighter. And for people who've been training longer, your eyes get brighter. And what that means is, is that just everything just starts looking brighter. Um, and, and so it kind of just, it just everything feels more luminous. And for people who've been reading that, you know, they'll be familiar with that wording or who've been listening to the teaching, that's where it comes from. And literally everything starts feeling brighter on the whole. And then if not, you start actually having the perspective or the experience that if you just let it release, then you can tell where it's releasing from your body. And then once it releases off of your body, then you can look at whatever is going on with perspective, not from a fearful place, from just a relative awareness, but with the absolute awareness. And you're supposed to look at it with both. Uh, and you know that's what's called a balanced perspective. But when you look at it, because you're not so caught up, you're not gonna be coming from a defensive or critical space, but you'll be coming at it from an actual solution oriented space of you know, what people would call benevolence, generosity. Uh, what it really just means is that you feel safe. Um, and that's really what it means. So if you ask me the question, why is it that's so difficult you know, to not focus on the problem? It's because it's so real. It's tied to the actual issues that are going on. And we are designed to seek balance, literally. Emotional balance, intellectual balance, physical balance. And whenever we don't feel it, we want to experience a balance. Uh, you know, it's, it's part of a survival mechanism. If you, if, you, if you didn't care about it, then you would become unhealthy, whether it's emotional, mental, or in some way. And so it's actually a good thing that we want, we're interested and that it, the only issue is, is that it's outside the perspective of the whole. So we get caught up in it 
And we don't get to approach it from a place of restfulness, of balance and things like that. And so we also tend to come up with scarcity solutions. And because of that, you know, we perpetuate the cycle of karma. And that's, you know, what that means. So you, you keep acting out of fear, you're going to keep producing the same results because typically when you come from fear, you're not gonna have good perspective. And so you're not gonna really address the issue with abundance um, or, you know, with perspective, if you will. And so the only thing you would need to do is the next time you're having a crummy day and you're feeling like that, to actually just from this place of space and light, you know, and where, whether if your cultivation is at a place where when you notice a space around you, you feel spacious and you can tell the light and actually that happens without imagination, you get to a point where you just notice the space and you can feel the luminosity of the space and the spaciousness and you can feel the things getting brighter and that's your system releasing and clearing itself of tradition saying impurities. I like to just say tension, if you will. Um, and you know, when your tension releases, you know, probably from a scientific perspective, what's happening is that your nervous system is opening up and your nerves are firing better. So your mind, your brain literally is waking up. And so therefore actually probably you, the, your brain itself is getting brighter. You know, that's, that's gonna be my guess. And it's getting oxygenated better and circulation is getting better because you know the simple act of relaxation is really the, the the most important thing for balance and health so knowing that with that awareness when you start feeling crummy and then you start focusing on the problem it's just to relax and to bring your awareness back to space and light knowing that it's going to resolve what you're going through and where you're not trying to solve the problem. And that's a key. If you try and solve the problem, it causes more tension. And the tradition says, let it resolve itself. And it really does. Because what you're doing is you're basically just letting go of the fear so that you can have better perspective. So you don't have to worry about the problem of solving. Actually, what you're doing is you're, you're approaching it so that you can solve the problem even more completely because you're letting go of the fear, but at the same time, you're not ignoring it. You're actually just observing it with awareness. And so it's different from it. So most people, when I you know, say this, think that I'm saying ignore it, but no, I'm actually just saying, no, bring awareness to it. Just look at it from a space and uh, perspective of space and light. And it's kind of just watching something. It's called observation without evaluation. And then because your perspective is on space and light and your body and as a whole, not just you know, a part, you will literally start feeling your body relax as you are looking at it. You will, because you're observing it, you'll have better understanding of the actual problem um, of what's going on. And then as it releases off of your body, you will feel more spacious. And because you've been observing it, you'll have better understanding of it. And then because you're not afraid and you understand the problem better from a wider perspective, as it releases, you'll be like, oh, and you just feel better. You'll feel like you've released something. You know, like when you come to a realization, you're like, oh, you know, if someone says something or something happens and you realize, oh, wow, you know, I was really caught up. And then, you know, and then all of a sudden when you release that, you just feel better. You know, like when there, if there was a misunderstanding and you see it, it's almost like that. And then when that happens, you see better and once you see better, it's like the, the solution just comes. And so what I like to say is, is that one, have compassion and just know that the reason you're having shame is because your natural state, you're not being who you're meant to be, meaning as in your natural state is to be relaxed and you're not relaxed. And so you're feeling bad about not being relaxed. And it's a forceful way, shame is a forceful way of trying to bring yourself back to the balance. You know, like, oh, and just noticing that you're having shame and then actually just allowing yourself to be compassionate with it by actually just staying with it or observing without evaluation until it releases. And then once it releases, then it's good. But 
Don't try and not look at it because you do want to look at it. Okay. So <laughs> that's about, <laughs> as you can see, it, it's actually an entire survival system. So it's actually, there's a lot more to talk about this, but I think that's the best I can do within the given time I have. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. I could feel uh, things opening up and seeming brighter um, just you talking. And I feel like one of the easiest ways in is just to feel the light from someone else, you know, feel that spaciousness and light. Yeah. So having your example is always really helpful, even if it's just your presence in morning class, because it's like, oh, that's what it's like. And I, um, what's the, the context as well? <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to mention that um, as, you're, as you're talking about it, it's becoming more apparent. So yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, uh, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so the next time, you feel like you're judging yourself like that. Just notice that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm having shame about not being able to relax. Okay, so, you know, it's kind of like, as you said. And so when you're dealing with the micro thoughts, as you are saying, what you're doing is you're just letting things release and you're noticing it release. And that's a very act of self-compassion. It's not very complex. So, and mm. if you are noticing the problems, then don't beat yourself up. Notice that you're noticing it because you are ironically a being of light. Because you're being of light, you're noticing where the darkness is and you're dissatisfied that there's darkness. And all you need to do is to just bring light, which is your awareness, not focus. That's like a spotlight. That's, you know, that, that's like interrogation. And so that doesn't work. You know, that makes you more tense. But you just bring awareness, which is light. And once you bring awareness, the spacious kind, then as you notice today, it will start releasing. Thank you so much, Master Kim. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, now I am at time, so I need to get going, but thank you for listening and uh, hopefully that was helpful and have a great day of awareness. Thank you, Master Kim. Thank you, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Welcome. Bye.